All right, guys, I think we're live. Can anybody see or hear me yet? I don't know what's going on. There we go. I think I got it working all right. Can you guys hear me? Let me know in the live chat. I think I'm good. Should be, I think. Tell me if you guys can hear me. I can read you over, yes. Breaker 1-9, we're here. All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, this is my first time doing a live stream. Thanks for hanging out. So uh, we are like two subs away from 1,200, so that's pretty exciting. All right, Luke, what's up, man? Thanks for hanging out. Glad you guys can hear me. Um, so yeah, I don't even know where to look when I do this. This is weird. Anyways, yeah, we're right uh, right under 1,200 subs, so that's pretty cool. Um, YouTube finally let me do live stream stuff, so I figured I'd give it a try and hang out with you guys. Magus, 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 Simon, you got it, man. Dude, I haven't. I found this shirt in my closet, or yeah, in my closet. I haven't worn this shirt in like five years. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta put that thing on. Anyways, the reason that we're here is to unbox a couple things that I uh, picked up this week. A couple of them are for the channel that I'm gonna do some demos with. Hi, Kaylee. Bye. My girlfriend came down to creep on me real quick. So anyways, yeah, I picked up a couple pedals and a couple amps and a guitar. Now, one of the amps I already unboxed, one in the guitar I bought locally, but uh, I figured we'd show it anyways and see if uh, you guys think I should do anything with it, if I should do a review on it. It's a, it's a new guitar, um, but I don't really do guitar stuff all that much. It seems like people really seem to come here for the amp demos. So uh, again, yeah, you guys let me know what you want to see, so... It's only your left ear? Is it only coming out the left speaker? I don't know how to fix that, man. I'm using my focus right in a microphone. It should be coming out stereo, but. Says analog one and two. I think it should be working okay. But yeah, if it's only coming out the left, let me know. I'll try to fix it unless it's terrible or unless it's not that bad and then we can uh, redo it real quick. I literally just figured out how to do this tonight. I totally half-assed this whole thing, so. <laughs> Shit. All right. Let me see if I can figure out how to uh, get the input to capture on both sides. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't know. It says it should be coming through both sides, but I see what you're saying. It's only I'm only getting a uh, I'm only getting something on the left hand side. Hmm. What's up, Brendan? Good mixture of everything. Okay, we can do that. Trust me, I'd love to do guitars. I'm not I'm not a spec nerd on guitars like I am with uh, amps and stuff. Uh, same with pedals. I'm fairly new to pedals. I've had a few boosts over the year, but uh, not really something that I ever dove super deep into. I just would buy a guitar if I liked it, and most of them were Gibsons. So um, I'm definitely down to review some guitars and stuff if that's what you guys want to see, hear my opinions on. 
won't be buying any new Gibsons because they pretty much have been doing the same thing for the last, uh, you know, 30 years. So nothing that they're putting out, even though I love their guitars, excites me. Um, but there's a lot of companies that are putting out some really cool stuff. Um, some of the new trends in guitars are, are exciting, in my opinion, especially stainless steel frets, lots of ebony fretboards, stuff like that. Um, lots of neck through stuff, which I really like neck through guitars. They tend to be real bright and spanky, which is what I like. So lots of cool stuff to try. What's up, Andrew? Everybody go check out Watcher Pittsburgh Hardcore Facebook page. Yeah, Voodoo Custom Pickups says, yeah, let's let's see some stuff on pickups. By the way, um, if you guys caught my KHDK video that I did this morning, that was the first video that I did with a Voodoo Custom Pickup that Rich sent me. It's the Alchemist model, which is uh, Greg Campbell, who does the Angry Tones YouTube page. Um, that's his signature model. I got to say, I'm super impressed with it, and I don't gush about stuff or endorse things that I don't really feel are a good product because, you know, I, I can basically get, you know, anything. I don't have to use something that, you know, someone sent me to try out and the pickup actually has blown me away. I'm, I'm really, really impressed by it. So, uh, you're going to see that guitar with that pickup a lot. Um, I actually talked to Rich today about getting a new pickup for the guitar that I'm going to show you guys. Um, so we've got something in the works for that probably. Um, but yeah, uh, Voodoo Custom Pickups, I, uh, one for one so far as, as far as awesome, uh, awesome products. That, that Alchemist sounds great. Yeah, you're right, uh, Fat Apache. Um, I was actually approached by uh, Jamie Slays. I'm not sure if you know his YouTube, but he's, uh, he's a UK YouTuber who actually has a ton of uh, followers like 90,000 subscribers or something. And he's working with a pickup company and he has a signature pickup. And uh, they were talking to me um, about possibly getting one of those and putting it in a guitar and trying it out and doing a little collaboration with him. Um, he plays a lot of like metalcore type stuff. So like As I Lay Dying and Parkway Drive, stuff like that. So um, I was thinking about grabbing one of those and giving one of those a try and grabbing a couple of their other pickups. I really wish that I could remember the company name I feel like an asshole right now I think it was legendary pickups um, from the UK smaller company but the demos that he showed me sounded really good so that's something I would definitely consider doing as well see I haven't really met a DiMarzio that I've liked yet Luke and I've wanted to I've got nothing against the brand I want to like their pickups I think they're really favorably priced uh, they're very close in price to a lot of the Seymour Duncan stuff they have a lot of pickups that sound like they would be really interesting to me but um, everyone I've tried just kind of left me wanting something else I have a Titan right now DiMarzio Titan and I've got an LTD 2015 uh, MH anniversary series that has the deactivators in them, and those are pretty cool. i got to feel them out a little bit more, but um, yeah, I haven't met a DiMarzio pickup that I'm super pumped about yet, but again, I'm fully open to trying anything, giving it a shot. So, um, Super Distortion is one I tried I didn't like, but if you love it, man, that's that's awesome. I mean, if it's great for you, that's that's great. Frailty lives. What's up? What's up? I'm I'm pumped that so many guys are uh, tuning in right now. This is cool. I feel like I'm talking to myself, but I'm trying to uh, figure out whether I should look at my computer or look at you guys. Custom deactivator D8 or A8. That would be cool. Demarzio Dominion's great. The Dominion's another one I've wanted to try for a while, so um, I would definitely take a look at that. Um, yeah just depends. I, I like to buy stuff used just so I don't lose out if I resell it, if I don't like it. Um, and you don't see a lot of used DiMarzio pickups around. They're hard to find specific models. So yeah. Ben Potter, what's up, man? How's it going? Glad you're here. All right. Should I open a couple boxes? I don't have anything super. I've got one thing that's super exciting. I don't have anything that's like crazy. Um, but I just figured it'd be fun to open it here with you guys and, and show you my intentions with the uh, channel, I guess. Um, have I tried the Lace Death Bucker? Yeah, actually, it was a long time ago. I want to say it was like six years ago. It was a long time ago. That thing was cool. It was definitely 
interesting. Uh, I remember it being super high output, but very clean at the same time. It's weird. It like didn't uh, saturate. It was it was interesting. It sounded super thick and very punchy. So it was a cool pickup, no doubt. Um, I should try one again. It's been a while. It's been too long. Uh, I like lace pickups, especially the dissonant aggressors, the dissonant aggressors, uh, the Bill Kelleher models. Those things are awesome. Um, I want to try the Brent Hines ones. I've tried a few other models, and the, the other ones were cool. They just weren't for me, but the dissonant aggressors, I really like those pickups. I've got a, two or three sets of them, actually, so those are good stuff. Uh, Luke Wilson, haven't tried bare knuckles yet. Steep price of entry. Yeah, dude, you're not kidding. They're they're not cheap. They don't go cheap on the used market either. I've tried an Aftermath, which I did not like. Um, the Juggernauts, which I remember being a little too modern for me, but I didn't think they were a bad pickup. Um, I had, or I have a nail bomb in one of my guitars, and it actually, or two of them. I have a nail bomb, and I'll Nico nail bomb in two of them, and that one sounds really good. Um, and then Derek Barici, my other guitarist in Bushido Code, he's got a painkiller in his uh, Les Paul, and that thing sounds really good. So I've been trying to land a painkiller for a little while, but I can't find them used. I mean, I'm willing to pay about 100 bucks for a pickup, to be completely honest. Uh, it's, it's even tough for me to pay that when I remember I would buy, you know, Duncan Distortions and used 498Ts and stuff like that for 40 bucks a piece. So I'm, I'm a bit of a cheap ass when it comes to that stuff, but you know, it, you get what you pay for too. So uh, production pickup is usually not going to be as good as a custom wound pickup um, by a small winder. It, it, that's what I've come across at this point. I mean, they're great. Don't get me wrong, but usually, I mean, like this voodoo that I have, the clarity is, is awesome. The, the touch response is awesome. I've got another couple custom pickups that I ordered from this guy, uh, Craig Vineham in Canada. And I don't even know if he's still doing them anymore because it's been a while since I ordered them, but those are awesome too. All right, where are we at? Bare knuckles are good, but nothing great over. Uh, I mean, I got I gotta agree. They they all they have their own voicing. Uh, they have lots of clarity, but nothing about them has really stood out to me as amazing. I like clear. I like clarity overall, but I mean, uh, none of the voicings. Oh, I have a bare knuckle holy diver too that I completely forgot about. Um, I'm gonna be putting that in my Jackson V that's behind me. So yeah, uh, I'll do a video on that one too. Um, Arcana, Arcana pickups, Rich, or Arcane? I've heard Arcane pickups are good. Uh, one of my friends used to recommend me the Bulldozer quite often. Um, I'm thinking that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I've never tried that one, uh, Apache. Never tried it. Those don't come up very often either. Um, I will say the, the Duncan Alpha Omegas are awesome. I absolutely love the bridge pickup on that. It's what I use to record the new Bushido Code full length, all of my tracks on there. Um, the Omega super clear, got just enough hair, Arcana. Okay, I'll check them out, man. Uh, I thought you were talking okay, Arcane, but uh, I'll take a look at those guys too. I want to get a couple more of your pickups in here first though, man. Uh, the Alchemist impressed me, so we're going to try some of your stuff. Um, all right, I'm going to start off, open a box real quick. Less shrill, smoother SH6. See, I like the brightness of the SH6, but that's just me. I mean, you guys can probably deduce that, uh, oh, new Bushido code preview? Ooh, I don't know if I can do that. Um, I probably could. I don't know how, but I could try. Um, why do I think Spawn and Seriotone amps aren't as popular? Um... They're small companies, and I don't think that they've made an effort like Friedman has to um, expand and grow. You know what I mean? Friedman's constantly updating his design. He's constantly pumping out new stuff. He's doing really well with like uh, relations with his company um, and advertising via like social media and stuff like that. Um, but I think he wants to grow his company. Splawn. They had their heyday, but I don't think Scott ever wanted his company to be huge. I don't think he ever wanted it to turn into what Friedman is, where it's so big that he subcontracts out everything. I think he always wanted to build stuff in-house. So um, you guys know how much I love Splawn stuff, but I really think that uh, they're kind of, they've shot themselves in the foot because they haven't come out with any new circuits in so long 
and they're competing with themselves on the used market. So, yeah, I don't why they're not more popular in general. I don't know. Uh, I really don't. You guys know how much I love them. Derek, my other guitarist, loves them. My friend Nick, uh, who I talk to Gear about all the time, who lives down in Pittsburgh, he just got a Nitro the other day, and he's like psyched on it, which makes me happy because I love recommending gear to people, and they're happy with it in the end. I mean, that's the whole reason I started this channel is to demo a bunch of amps that people don't really get to hear in the style that I play, but I know there's a lot of people out there. So when people you know get pumped on something I recommend or get pumped on one of my demos, I love that. That's awesome. Uh, Friedman's in Guitar Centers. Yeah, yeah, like I said, man. I mean, Friedman, he busted his ass to get where he's at, no doubt, but it was intentional, you know what I mean? He wanted his company to grow. Uh, Seriatone being in Malaysia, again, they don't advertise. Uh, everything's uh, sold to order. They don't build anything in advance and ship out large batches. Everything's built by hand. So when you keep an operation going like that and you have no subcontracting, um, your company doesn't really have a whole lot of room to grow, especially if you're building stuff overseas. So that's that's part of it. But again, I don't think that Seriatone's trying to be, or Chariotone, sorry. I don't think that they're trying to be that company that uh, just explodes onto the market and becomes a mainstay, you know what I mean? I think they're happy with where they're at. So I've known about both brands for a long time. Um, so, I mean, they're popular enough that once you start getting into boutique gear, those are two of the first names that, that you start to recognize when you're talking about modern Marshall stuff. So, I mean, there's that to say about them. Um, bought a stealth in large part due to your demos. Tip me over. Awesome, man. See, that's what I'm saying. That's so cool to me that that someone... I had a couple people also rec or, uh, message me and say, hey, I bought a... I bought a Chariotone Chupacabra. I've been waiting years to hear a demo that is in that style. And um, I went and bought one based on your demo. I, lit I think I had at least three people, three or four people message me and say that. To me, that's crazy. I mean, I've been recommending gear to my friends for years. I'm sure Andrew can uh, attest to that. But, um, you know, to make a demo and just put it out into the world and people go and order stuff based off that is pretty cool. That's, uh, you know... It's a pretty glowing endorsement, I guess. Um, same with the Dead Weld Audio pedal, uh, that Duality DX that I just did, sitting right over here. I love that thing, and I had multiple people message me and say, hey, dude, I went and bought one of those um, right away, and I don't blame you because it's awesome. Uh, it's an awesome pedal. Makes me happy, though. Uh, that KSR Orthos, uh, that sold and got reposted, and I haven't messaged the guy back yet, so I made him an offer and he denied it. He didn't come at me with a counter offer, which, hey, rule 101 on Reverb or any selling site, if someone makes you an offer, even if it's a low offer, don't just deny it. Go back to them and start negotiating. At least let them know that you're interested in selling the amp as opposed to just denying it and never say a word to them. That's a quick way to not, you know, make a sale. Um, yeah, Leon Todd, he's got a bunch of Seriotone stuff up. Molecular's one I really want to try. I really want to try that damn gargoyle uh, and see how that thing is. I know it's supposed to be like a Fort and Meshuggah. I'm having a hard time with this box here. Um, you are buying his... Ser see, Rich, that's funny because Mike told me that that thing was like his end-all, be-all uh, <laughs> amp. So the fact that he's selling it's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, you'll have to let me know how that is. I know, I know Mike really liked it, so... Um, I've been curious about that one for a while. Um, Tim, dude, thanks, man. Um, I only have one seven string. I have no idea what I'm doing with a seven string. I can barely do anything on six strings. Um, and it's got EMGs in it, so I wouldn't be able to do that now. But in the future, I may hit you up. I appreciate that. Appreciate the offer. Um, all right, guys. So I finally got this first damn box open. Um, the first pedal is getting good videos of poor man's good tone would be killer too. Like some of the amp pick. See, that's, um, I did that jet city demo and granted that was back when I was doing everything on my cell phone a couple months ago. Um, but people didn't really seem to care about it. You know, I really want to do like cheap amps that don't suck 
or cheap cabs. You know, I want to do a series like that so I can get some info out there on gear that's cheap but sounds really good. Um, so I, I'm totally down with that. The triple X demo that I did the other day, uh, that video did really well. And those amps are like three to 400 bucks on the used market. They're kind of climbing up a little bit, but I, you know, you know, I have some crazy amps. Uh, it's, it's not me bragging, but just saying like, uh, there are some three and $400 amps that I have that are absolutely awesome. My VTM 60, that thing's rad. Um, I'm definitely not a snob when it comes to gear. So I'd love to do a series like that. Um, yeah, definitely going to order a Granifier, definitely going to order an Omega Granifier, but, um, cab, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough for me to pay 1300 bucks for a cab. That's no slight to Omega. Cause I know that's how much like a Friedman cab costs new, but I've never paid more than 700 bucks for a cab. And that was my Friedman cab and my Bogner cab. And even that was like tough for me because most of the time I just score cabs when they're cheap. So I'd like to try one for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, the VTMs are really good, man. Uh, unfortunately, they're so old that there's a lot of variants in them. The one that I just got needed a cap job, but I bought it because it needed a cap job, and I got it cheap. And after the caps uh, were replaced, dude, that thing rips. I'm going to be doing an updated video on that one, too. Um, do you say, what do you mean, Luke, from the vault? Tell me what you mean. I'm always open to your guys' ideas. Um, anyways, all right, guys. Um, so I bought a little pedal bundle here cause I got a good price on the package deal. Um, and the first one is a Earthquaker hoof. It's a fuzz pedal. I'm not a fuzz guy. I could definitely do a video on this, but, uh, I probably am not going to do it like justice. I could have Derek come play it. Derek knows a lot of cool, cool fuzz riffs and stuff like that, like stone or doom metal riffs. I could have him try this thing. Otherwise, this is going to go up on the reverb store, which you guys have been bugging me about the link. I know I, I said last week I was going to put it up on Friday. Uh, it's, it's been a busy week, so I apologize. I've been slacking, but I finally got some stuff posted in the Facebook groups and stuff tonight. So the first thing I'm going to do tomorrow is post it up on my reverb store. Um, this pedal will go up. Um, I'm not really a fuzz stoner metal guy. There are some cool bands like that, but I just don't really play it. So anyways, it was just part of the package. So I said, sure. Uh, second part of the package, this guy, little decimator X, not really much I can do on the channel. Maybe I can have a gate shoot out at some point. Cause I've, I've got a few gates now. Um, not sure if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing. I've got a decimator two boss NS two. I have this little decimator X now, and I have that little cheap green Chinese Rowan one. I think it is or something that actually works awesome. And right now, uh, Mr. Truck driver, Sean's let me borrow a litched lamb. They're a German company that I have no idea how to pronounce. Uh, but it's like, a key and gate, I think, or lock and key, something like that. Their gate, it's a four four input gate with the keyed input. That thing works really well. Um, so I could do some sort of gate shootout, but uh, I don't know how cool that would be. You guys tell me. Uh, Andrew says, I have one of those for a little board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty much why I got it. I want to set up a smaller board with some, with some stuff on it. Um, this I would like to be on there to save some space. I'm really thinking... I went to Europe last year with one of my bands and I carried my pedal board, but I couldn't take an amp and that sucked because I had to use literally a broken dual rectifier for a 10 day tour and it sounded terrible. Like it screeched like crazy. I got it sounding decent, but still, oh man, that was painful. So I'm like, all right, if I ever go over again, which may happen with Bushido code, um, I want to just put a board together that has like an amp and like the Duncan power stage or some sort of power amp on it and a preamp pedal, but something like this to help save space and weight. Perfect for that. Um, the ghoul, pretty awesome gate. You know, a couple people Ben have been telling me to check those guys out lately. I got to take a look at their pedals for sure. Um, decimator two and Azul. the Azul, everybody guys, I'm going to say it right now. I am not a hype dude. Um, so that's why I have never really bought into the Fortin stuff. I said that in my Fortin OD9 video. I just think it's ridiculous the the amount of hype that certain products get, like a noise gate. I, I to me, 
it just seems silly that people are that excited over a noise gate. But I may not be like the rest of the people. So when I see that, I tend to stay away from those products a little bit, especially once the price gets driven up. But I will try it at some point. I've heard really, really good stuff. So not knocking Fortin or you, Rich. I just, I've stayed away from Fortin stuff for that reason. Um, I think the price of some pedals. Yeah, uh, some of them are pretty pricey. But again, if you're a small company hand building these things, man, your time is valuable. If you're building a good product and you're putting good components in it, Sure, it may cost you, you know, 60 bucks in components to put it together and you sell it for 200 but I, I guarantee that unless you're using a uh, kit pedal board and just slightly modifying it, uh, you're sticking a lot of time into each of those. So it is what it is, man. I don't know. <sighs> Can't get a sound I like using that stuff. I'm not a hype guy either, but I found one for a good price. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that, Rich. Not saying that at all. I was just putting a little Fortin disclaimer out there. Uh, which is kind of ironic considering one of the things that I have here. So um, the third pedal in that package that I got is this really kind of dirty and gross uh, full-tone OCD drive. I haven't owned one of these in five, six years, something like that. Um, so this is really, the decimator is why I bought the whole package of everything, but uh, I was really curious about this. I haven't played one of these in a long time. And I want to do a video shooting out like the most popular overdrives as like an intro to boosting an amp. Um, Cause a lot of people wonder why we put overdrives into an amp. And I want to show like the three most popular drives. This is one of them. Um, TS nine would be the other one. And then I've got a third one that I got to unbox here. Um, no, I actually asked the seller uh, which version it was, and he said he was too scared to break it to open it up. So I'm pulling out the little pinwheels right now. We'll see what version it is. I asked him the same question. He wasn't about it, so oh well. Um, Pat, uh, PCP Pedals, that's another company that I heard of, Rich. Um, I'm going to have to take a look at them. Like I said, I'm fairly new to the pedal game. I used my boss, uh, or not my boss, my MXR M77 Badass Overdrive and my Decimator for years, and I was super happy with that setup for a long time, so I just never felt the need. I always wanted to dump my money into amps <laughs> instead of pedals, so I never felt the need to go and buy those, uh, but now I've tried a couple really cool ones, and it's kind of, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Now I'm getting on that pedal kick. Uh, all right, guys, so I have the OCD open. Usually they have the version written somewhere. This was made in 2010, so it's an older one. V1.4, 1.4. You guys probably know a little bit more than I do about this stuff. Let's see if that'll focus in. Well, Greg, if you were here on time, you know, you could have heard me talking your pickup up, but you're, you're late. That moment is past. Come on, focus. All right. Sorry, guys. It ain't going to focus. Uh, pretty sure it's a V1. V1.4, I think it says. I don't know if that's worth anything or not. I know some of these versions fetch more than others. We'll see. I think V4 was kind of like the most mass-produced one, wasn't it? I'm not super, again, I'm not super up on the whole pedal thing. So you guys tell me. I'm always open to new information. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Luke, I have tried an elect uh, the TC Spark. I had the full-size version. Um, it was a cool pedal. I forget why I sold it, but it worked really, really well with my Marshall 1987X when I had that for some overdriven classic rock tones. I don't know why. I just love that amp. Like when I put that pedal into that amp, that was a godly, oh, that was such a good sound. But unfortunately, I ended up selling the 1987X because I really didn't have any use for it being in hardcore bands. Um... And I had other amps that kind of did similar stuff. So now 
I would like to have something like that again for sure, but we'll see. Not a necessity by any means. I have a Bouguera 1960 that's a Super Lead clone. Um, but yeah, I haven't even plugged that thing in yet. I wanted to make a video of it and just sell it real quick. Yeah, watch it back, Greg. Get me some views, man. I got to pay for more pickups. All right, so that was box number one. Three pedals there. The OCD and the Decimator X. Those were the highlights. All right, this one, something I bought a while ago and just came in. It was on back order from Musician's Friend. Back when I bought that Randall amp that I did a little demo on and my Schecter KM6, they were both Black Friday deals. I have an account with Musician's Friend, which actually their rewards program with the points, I've gotten a ton of stuff with their points. Um, and I always buy everything when, when it's on sale, so it's kind of like an additional 8% off of whatever you bought on sale. Um, so yeah, this is a pedal that I haven't had in even longer than the OCD, so I'm really excited to kind of try it again because it's been a long time since I played one of these. But nothing fancy. It's just a Boss SD-1. Um, everybody says that these were the pedals to stick into a JCM-800 back in the 80s. It's been a really long time since I played one of these. Um, but anyways, yeah, I had just enough points to get this thing for free, so I figured why not? I could use it for the boost board and uh, use it for my little shootout. So yeah, there's that. Boss SD-1. Nothing super exciting, but fun pedal nonetheless. Have you guys ever done any of the uh, mods to the SD-1? I bought a modded one back in the day. I'd be interested in trying some myself. You used to be able to find these for like 20, 25 bucks used. Uh, that does not seem to be the case anymore because I've been looking for one for a cheaper price. They're only $50 new, but you find them used and they're like 40 bucks. So it's like, the hell's the point in buying it used when you can get a brand new one for 50? And most places will give you 10 to 15% off if you ask them. So you're basically, you know, same price used as new. It doesn't make any sense. All right, so those are the pedals. Next up, we've got an amp. And it's got a little something on the box. It'll probably give it away pretty quickly. I got this amp from Jason Quick, which I don't know if he subscribes to my channel. Um, but he said he'd watched a bunch of my videos and he actually gave me a better deal on the amp because he knew my channel. So that was pretty cool. Appreciate it, Jason. Keeping the dream alive, man. Bet it's a crank. No, it's not, thankfully. Not a crank. I'll tell you my crank story. Um... I hope the standby works, yeah. We'll see, bro. Anyways, crank. I owned one crank. Um, I owned it for one day. Sadly enough, it was back when they were kind of worth a little bit of money, back in like 2010. I had just bought a JCM-800-2203 Kerry King model that was like brand new. Uh, thinking that it would be good for down-tuned hardcore. You know, I was an idiot. So anyways, I got it, and I'm like, this thing sucks. That's before I knew about uh, overdrive pedals. And I'm like, all right, I need to get rid of this thing. So I called Adam at World of Music, and he's like, yeah, we have a crank Rev 1 up here. I'm like, awesome, cranks are supposed to be sick, man. So I go up. I trade them my carry king. Oh, it hurts to tell me. It hurts to tell this story. Um, I traded them my carry king and an Epiphone uh, prophecy and cash, a little bit of cash on top. That's how much they wanted for this crank. And I got the crank. 
and I took it to one practice the first day I had it, and it blew up, and it never worked right again after that. So that's my crank story. I lied. I had a Chadwick last year, Crank Chadwick. Uh, read a lot of good things about the Chadwick, and I got it. I didn't like it at all. But that was the V1. There's a two-channel version out that Jesse, my buddy Jesse, uh, says he really likes. Um, I have not heard it, so I can't vouch, but... I know a lot of people like the Rev Plus stuff, um, but there was, there was like a Rev 1 Plus and a Krankenstein Plus, and I think they did them different. Uh, I forget what they did. They upgraded the power section or something like that, and they have like 6550s or KT88s in them. I think they did some other stuff, but a lot of people seem to really like the revisions, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the... the I'm really interested in the armored amplification stuff too. Um, haven't heard any of it in person. Haven't even seen one in person, but I'd be interested in checking out one of those. Um, I just saw something about a rev. Rev used in Guitar Center. You're catching... Oh, you bought one used at Guitar Center and it blew up. Well, that sucks, man. Can't say I've never had that happen to me before. What's up, DB? Thanks for hanging out, man. Yes, it is tickling my fancy, Greg. It's a great pickup. Despite your best efforts, you did a good job. But we'll give we'll give Rich the credit. Nah, man, it's it's a great pickup. I've been enjoying it. I'm gonna be using that uh, I'm gonna be using that thing for quite a few demos coming up here. So yeah, yep. Obviously, you guys knew what it was already. It's the Fortin sigil. Um, yeah, I wanted to try a Fortin amp, and this is the cheapest one. And I'm pretty bogged down with gear at the moment, so uh, um, I didn't want to go after anything super crazy. Um, this just happened to pop up, so I'm like, hey, all right, I've got a couple smaller amps. It would be cool to shoot this out against the MT-15, which I love the MT-15. Um, if I want to borrow a Sabo and then... Dude, that'd be great. Um, I don't know James at all, so I never ask people I don't know for hookups or anything like that. But um, <laughs> given Greg his stiffy, it seems like it's pretty easy to do, Rich. Um, Greg, sorry, you're my new punching bag. I know I don't even know you, man, but you just, you're that guy. You're that guy now. Love you, though. Uh, yeah, anyways, I'm going to shoot this out with the MT-15. I would love to do, Luke, I would love to do the LBX 5150 because I really love that amp, but I don't have one anymore. And you used to be able to get them for under 400 bucks all the time, and now you can't. I can't ever find them for under $400. So if anybody finds one under 400 bucks, let me know. I will buy it and I will absolutely shoot it out. Uh, but I'm not willing to pay more than like 425 shipped for one of those. Um, they, they're cool, but I have all three of the 50 watt EVHs, so... I would literally just be buying it for the channel. So I don't want to lose money on the resale once I'm done with it. That's all. <laughs> You're a good sport, Greg. Um, yeah. I truthfully don't know anything about this amp. I never researched Fortin stuff at all. Um, I know there's a standby issue because that's all anybody ever talks about when they... Uh, when they talk about show us i got a long sleeve on man i had to hide it sorry you can't see him today um 6505 mini yeah yeah that's not a bad price um i bought mine for around that price and i think i sold it for like 375 or something um yeah i saw i saw <laughs> lewis's video on it apparently fortin wasn't too happy um yeah i mean i'm gonna you guys are gonna get honest thoughts from me on this thing I got no problem speaking my piece if I don't like something or if there's an issue. So we'll see. We'll see if mine has a standby issue. I'll put it up against the MT-15 and then maybe what would you guys else, what else would you guys want to see it against? Um, maybe just the regular 5150 50 watt or the Stealth or something. Um, I don't have a lot of lunchbox style amps to compare this to. I, I've sold a few of those that I used to have. So I don't know. May or may not like overdrive. See, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure, man. I had an angle iron ball, uh, and that thing, when I stuck an overdrive in front of that thing, I wanted to rip my ears off. It was terrible. MT-15 walks over the sigil. I mean, hey, 
if it does great i mean it's it's half the price i think the mt15 sounds great by the way um especially when i got it mine had all jj preamp tubes in it and i switched out v1 and v2 i think i switched out v1 for a tongue saw and v2 for like a penta or another chinese that wasn't quite as high gain and that transformed that amp it turned it into a different amp like seriously it opened it up there wasn't such a ridiculous amount of gain on the dial excuse me so tube swapping in that amp made a big difference regardless of what glenn fricker says uh mason mark 535 and it slays a sigil yeah Thir Mark 535 is a cool amp. Uh, Derek had one of those for a minute, so I got to hear those for a while. Um, MT15, power amp, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, it sucks. Um, spending money on gear, you know? I do it all the time. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have a good job, but I also bust my ass. But, um, yeah, sometimes life comes first for sure. How'd I start my first my first amp ever? My first amp that I got was um, we're not gonna go back to my childhood. My first amp that I got as a musician when I actually started, I literally bought an amp when I went on my first U.S. tour. Didn't know anything about tube amps, and I bought a Madison Divinity. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with Madison Divinities, they were like the next big thing back in like 2007, 2008 for all the metalcore. They were sponsoring all the metalcore bands back then. And it was an okay sounding amp, but they were rigged or they were riddled with problems. They were terribly built. Um, yeah, duct, there, there was a thread where somebody pulled it apart and there was duct tape inside of theirs. I believe there was a presence pot that wasn't hooked up to anything on one of the models. So, I mean, they were just kind of a joke. Um, yeah, uh, so that was my first tube amp ever. It broke down on me twice in the midst of a U.S. tour when I was already broke. And, uh, as soon as I got home, I was like, I got to get a different amp because now I'm interested in gear and I ended up buying a 6505 off a friend. And that was my only amp that I had after that for a while. And then I got that Kerry King, traded that for the Rev. Uh, turned the rev back in because it broke right away. Bought my first Les Paul. Turned me into a Gibson guy immediately. Um, after that, after the 6505, I bought a PV Ultra Plus that I had for a hot minute. And loved that amp, but sold it because, I again, I was broke. Um, then I went and got a Triple X like a year later. I bought a Triple X. And I think that's really where my gear collection started to get ridiculous. Because after I bought the Triple X, uh, I got another Ultra Plus, And then I got a uh, PV Butcher on accident after that. Um, I bought a PV Butcher cab and Guitar Center sent me the head for 140 bucks, Which, still wish I had that thing. I've had a few of them and I always sell them, but those are cool too. Um... Block letter 50, yeah, I mean, a lot of hardcore metal guys, uh, 5150 is kind of the first one because they are they were so cheap for so long. It, it blows my mind that they're going for like a 1000 bucks right now. Um, they are not worth that by any means. Just get a 6505 for 500 bucks. Same amp. You guys can go back and watch my video from a couple days ago. They are the same amp. Um, first tube amp was a PV. You think the 112 Plus sucked? I think it's good. I got one. Um... Not as good as the head version. Um, the transformers in it, I think, make it sound kind of muddy. But I don't think it sucks. I think it's a decent amp. They were really good when you could get those combos for 300 bucks on the used market, but you can't do that anymore. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, live, uh, I live with my girlfriend. I don't live at home, man. She's uh, gracious enough to give me enough space to store all this crap. She definitely doesn't uh, love that I have all this stuff, but she puts up with me, so I must have my good side, right? Uh, solid state Randalls for a while. Yeah, those were really popular too, man. There's some good solid states. Sean, what's up? Shave those pits. Dude, it's been 10 years since I've thought of that. Um, 65 China versus USA. I don't know, man. Um Honestly, I'd have to get a Chinese one beside it. I have no idea. Uh, 
I'm not going to judge anything until I play it for myself. I'll say that. Where something is made doesn't matter to me as long as the price reflects where it's made and it's reliable. So that's all I got to say about that one. I will try to find a Chinese 6505 at some point and shoot it out against the 6505, see if there's any tonal difference. I doubt there will be, or it'll be small, but I'd be interested in doing it. Um, Greg wants a Dover. Well, Greg, I'm, I'm living your dream because I'm picking up a DA-50 in about two weeks. Somebody on Rig Talk messaged me and saw one of my videos and said that I was looking for a DA-50, so they're going to hit me up in two weeks when they're ready to sell it when their other amp comes. So I'll, I'll make a couple good demos for you. Uh, 6505, my first. Nothing but solid state stuff for most of my life. Century 200, RG100. Yeah, I don't... I don't uh, know much about the solid state stuff. Um, I had a PVX XL that was really, really good, like last year. Uh, I just didn't see myself using it over tube amps, so I sold it, but now I kind of wish I had it because I paid 100 bucks for it. Um, and I had an old Supreme 160, um, which was like the old Bandit with 160-watt power section in it. It was very similar to an Ultra-style amp, and those were really cool. So, again... I bought them for next to nothing and flipped them and made some cash on them and moved them along. So it is what it is. Yeah, the XXL is dope, man, for sure. DA50, got to try one. Yeah, same same here, man. Uh, I saw a couple videos and I was like, dude, I need to try one of these. These sound great. Um, Fat Apache, if you get into the Marshall tube tone stuff, just go for a DSL50. That's a really good entry into the Marshall stuff. Um, I did a video on one of those not long ago, and as soon as I plugged into it, I forgot how much I love that amp. That thing's awesome. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, Ben. If you put it into an actual 412 cab uh, and bypass the internal speaker, it sounds way better. Um, all right, I'm going a little long here, guys. I didn't think I was going to be on here this long. So I'm going to bring up the next item, which is this guy, a Chapman ML3 Modern. I bought this used at World of Music locally here. Um, it's literally in like new condition. It still has the original strings on it and there's not a mark on it. So if this is a guitar that you guys are interested in seeing a review on, I'll do a full on review because it's basically a new guitar. Um, I was talking to Rich at Voodoo um, about getting some pickups for this thing, so we'll see what we put in it. I'm gonna try the stock pickups before I rip anything out, but um, yeah, I don't know. You guys tell me. Chapman, another draw. Yeah, I never really got into that whole thing. I didn't really care, to be honest. Um, I try to stay away from drama. Too much of it, no good. I just like to play guitar badly, which I do a lot. Um, yeah, Rich, we'll do, the, the action's really low on this thing. But World of Music is uh, notorious for being dry. So there's some fret sprout going on here. So these fret ends are real sharp right now. So I'm kind of giving it a couple days before I really do anything with it to see if the uh, fretboard kind of, you know, gets a little bit of moisture in it and kind of expands a tad. Um, I've definitely had that happen on a couple guitars. One of my Jacksons did that. But yeah, it was made in Indonesia. So, um, Fred Sprout doesn't bother me. It's whatever, man. Take a little file to it and knock it off and you're good. Um, it would be better without it, for sure. The less work you have to do to a new guitar is better, but there's always going to be some sort of setup stuff involved. Usually the nuts cut too high because they want to give you a little room to, if you want to put bigger strings on it, to kind of file those slots out and everything. Court owns Indonesia factories. I believe they make stuff. Good. Yeah, I've been hearing good stuff about Court, um, but yeah. Yeah, I was the same way, uh, Apache. Honestly, man. This, they make this exact guitar in like a blue to purple flame fade, but it's on pre-order. I really wanted to get that one because I want a purple guitar so bad. Um, but yeah, this popped up for half the price of a new one, so couldn't say no to that. So anyways, yeah. Uh, sounds like you guys are on board with hearing something like this or seeing something like this. So I'll do a little review of this guitar on the channel once I played it a little bit. And then... Uh, Maybe we'll use this as a pickup platform for some new testers. I agree, Rich. The Voodoo or the the uh, Ghost Fred is dope. My only thing is I don't tend to love the hip shot or the flat style bridges. Um, I'm so used to using um, 
what the hell am I trying to say? I'm so used to using two pneumatic bridges that I never really got into the hip shot stuff, but I'm finally coming around to it. Um, so yeah, invading sick Chapman's. Yeah. Oh, dude, the bear massage or the little lap. I don't know what I'm saying. The Chapman, uh, his signature, dope. Very cool. Um, I may pick one up at some point and check that out as well. Um, 600 bucks less, you can get a Solar E 2.6. 600 bucks less than what, Rich? Um, I would like to try a Solar too. Those are another one that are on my list for this year. Um, I got to sell some stuff first though, for sure. I'm, I'm accruing too much. Uh, Ola England, yes, he does own Solar guitars. Yep, yep, he started the company. Um, he's a main designer, marketer, all that stuff. So pretty cool, I think. Yeah, Joe's Joe's Solar is dope. I had a couple of the Washburn uh, Parallaxes, which he helped design, which some of those became Solars, like the V. I had the V. Uh, I think it's like the V26 or something. I think it was really cool. And I got it for $250. But um, earlier this year, I sold uh, a whole bunch of gear because I bought a brand new car, which just got smashed with ice. So it really worked out for me. Um, but yeah, that was one of the guitars that went um the washburn parallax it was it's their like single cut shape it's got like a real fat booty on it it's it's kind of goofy shaped but uh plx i think is the model i don't know um it had duncan jb 59 in it and man that guitar was killer i kicked myself for selling that one too because now i can't find them um <clears throat> iron label action no man i haven't played any ibanez's period they have never interested me until recently so um, that's another thing I was going to post up. There's a few guitars that have been released this year that I want to try out. Um, and I was going to put it up to a vote and buy one of them. One of them is that new Ibanez that has the like iridescent paint color on it. It's like a super strat with the double humbucker. Um, that was one of them. So that or the, uh, man, I forget what the other ones were already. The other one was the, uh, LTD black metal Phoenix. Uh, I thought that would be a really cool one to do. And then there was a third one from another brand that I've never played. I think it was a Jackson, but I can't remember. Uh, no, man. I'm not picky on neck, on neck shape at all. Uh, at all. My 1958 Les Paul reissue has the fattest baseball neck you'll ever feel in your life. I love it. Uh, the Schecter C6 that I just bought is like super thin, super shredder neck. I'm not a shredder at all, but neck feels great to me so i'm really not picky about the neck it's way more about the action and just how the guitar feels and sounds for me so not super picky about that stuff but uh um brandon ellis yeah dude his is cool but i, I don't think i'm spending money on that thing because uh unless i just went to resell it afterwards that thing's a little too wild for me uh jackson monarch pro um jackson monarch pro I would consider that. Jason, my other guitarist, has a Monarch Pro, um, and it's awesome. Uh, it's a really good guitar. He really liked that one. That one also suffered from really bad fret sprout, though. Um, he, I think he actually cut his finger at practice one day when he was playing that guitar. Uh, Sean, funny you say that. I literally just got this last week and haven't even played it yet. Um, overall, the nuts cut super high on it. I think the person who had it before never did a setup in their life because the neck was all bowed out on it. Um, but super cool guitar. It's got a full shred in the bridge, um, which I love the Duncan full shred. That's one of my favorite pickups. I really wanted a maple neck Charvel. One, because I love the Fender headstock. I think the Fender headstock on like a metal style guitar is, is just a cool idea. It's a cool juxtaposition. And two, it's got that Swamp Ash body with like the, the wood grain, clear wood grain, matte finish. It's just a cool guitar. Um, yeah, so I did just pick this up. I got to do a full setup. The, net, the nut needs shaved down a little bit. It needs intonated. It's not in the greatest shape. But um, once I do, you'll probably see that on a few videos. Um, yeah, I really want to get something with a roasted maple neck. That'd be cool. Um, not sure what yet. The new Solars, they're looking cool. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't love the hip shot bridge, Rich. It's 
it's taken me a long time to get used to, but that's just because I played Gibsons for so long. So the tunematic bridge, I'm used to the bridge coming up at an angle and knowing exactly where to put your hand for palm mutes and stuff. So that's why I never liked um, Floyd Roses and stuff like that. But um, the hip shot finally growing on me. Uh, it depends on the guitar too. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm excited to use it. Honestly, uh, it's a cool guitar, and I love the I love the full shred. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Kramer V, do it up, man. It's Greg. I was talking to Sean, bro. What did I call you, Greg? Something better than Greg? All right, guys. <laughs> I'm running out of time. Going way too long. So the last item, this one's kind of a heartbreaker, is ugh, this. BE100. Um, it came in the other day, and Guitar Center decided to modify it in shipping. So now the head shell is expandable. So that's cool. Um, anyways, my buddy Matthew at the Youngstown Guitar Center, who's an awesome guy to deal with, refunded me the cost of a brand new uh, head shell from Friedman, which I ordered today. They gave me the money back today. I ordered the brand new head shell. So uh, all is well in the world. Um, yeah, if you guys pack your amps, please pack them in like two inches of bubble wrap. Don't just throw them in a box with packing and send it on its way and let the box, the amp loose inside the box, man. I've bought so many amps over the years where people just kind of throw it inside with bubble wrap and, and don't keep it secure inside the box. I mean, even if you got a ton of bubble wrap, if it can move around in there, it's going to break. There's no doubt about it. So luckily, I powered it on. Everything works. It sounds good. No bad tubes. No bad electronics. Just needs a new head shell. Got a good deal on it. I can live with that. Um... Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the amp itself. All I got to do is pull the chassis out and stick it in the new head shell when that comes. It should be about two weeks. Um, so yeah, just going to put it in a brand new Friedman head shell from Friedman. That way, you know, people who buy $4,000 amps tend to be really, really picky. So as much as I would like to put it in a custom head shell or something like that, it's going to make it really hard for me to resell. So I'm like, you know what? We could do something cool but I'm just going to stick it in here. I know I'm not going to keep this amp. I bought it because I got a good deal on it. Um, I'm going to put it up against my BE50 Deluxe in the runt and then maybe against like the Splawn or something just for, I'm buying stuff just for video ideas at this point, but I'm going to end up selling this amp because I'm not the biggest Friedman fan. Um, people find that surprising, but I just don't, they're not, they're not angry enough for me. They're very polite and refined. They're very good sounding amps don't get me wrong they sound incredible but for the super angry thrash stuff they just don't have that raw aggression it's just not there so um yeah 800 yeah i mean the 800 is way more raw it's just getting the 800 saturated enough is the problem so i mean if you're like me and you like to play saturated thrash stuff you got to really push it um but yeah i've got a uh 2203x the reissue and I've got a JMP 2203, and you hit those with the right pedal, they sound incredible. It's hard to beat, for sure. Um, got the lawyer tone? Oh, yeah, dude. Dad rock blues all day on this thing. Uh, no, I mean, it gets plenty saturated. It gets plenty mean. It's just really compressed and refined uh, for a martial tone. It just doesn't do anything for me. Um, yeah, B100 Deluxe, that's a great one. Um it just, they sound boring, not boring. They just sound too refined. They sound like a studio engineered Marshall. Like if you're listening to a Marshall back through monitors, as opposed after it's been EQ'd and compressed and everything, um, it's a good tone, just not my tone, but yeah. So yeah, guys, that's what I got for the channel, the pedals. The guitar, even even the Charvel, I probably won't do a review on the Charvel because it's not a new model anymore, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, but the Chapman's still a brand new model, and then I got those pedals. So, yeah, I want my house to fall apart too, yeah. Uh, yeah, plug in a 2203 and turn the volume up, and you're, you're well on your way. Um, but anyways, yeah, I had 
this was fun, guys. Fun first live stream. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully, we can get up to 1,200 subscribers after this. And, uh, oh, one more question real quick. Um, <laughs> I do. I, I'm not blaming you guys. I know it's me that talks too much. Trust me. Um, I did my Archon 50 demo today. Uh, some people wanted to see it shot out against the Badlander. I could do that. Um, but my other idea is a lot of people have been asking me about the PV Invective. Um, I could do the Invective. Or I could do the Stealth 5150 versus the 6L6 5150. Um, whatever you guys find most interesting. Uh, I guess just leave it in the comments if you watch this whole thing and, and let me know by tomorrow and I'll set it up. But yeah, anyways, thanks for hanging out again, guys. We'll do this again soon once I got some more gear to unbox and, and hang out and talk. So I uh, appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I'll see you on the next video tomorrow. Yeah, Invective needs airtime. Ice picky Invective. Hey, I'm glad your left ear was enjoying it, man. All right, for real. Uh, maybe I'll do the Invective tomorrow then. Sounds good. All right, see you guys.